She was 34, raising a 16-month-old son on her own when a near-fatal car accident changed her life in ways she never imagined. The crash severed her spine and left her paralyzed. But it didn't change her determination to be a strong, loving parent. Marjorie Onos is now an advocate for parents with disabilities, or as she prefers to say, different abilities. And as we approach Canada's week of accessibility in the Global Day of Parents, she is here with us now to share her story. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's really So first of all, tell us briefly about the day of the accident. Take us back. Um, so it was a Thursday morning and I was, um, you know, I had spent about a week with my family up north um, and my son was there and my sister and brother and so forth. And I was just going to work. Um, my son was staying with my parents at the cottage and I was on that road and I, my car hit black ice really. Um, and it was just really poor timing because as my car started to sway, there was a pickup truck right up ahead and a car behind me. So I was, you know, the impact was inevitable and uh, that's what happened. So tell us about the immediate aftermath. Right. Um, as soon as I saw the pickup truck and, and I, I knew something really bad had, would happen, I thought actually that I was going to die. And, um, but I lost consciousness. And when I woke up in the car, um, I couldn't feel um, or move anything below my neck, actually. Um, and then I prayed to have my arms back because I felt that if I had my arms, I could raise my son because I could hug him. I could like hold him. Um, so I knew right away that I was paraplegic or that something of that sort had happened. So you spent a month in hospital, five months at a readaptation center, and then you went home, you had help from your parents. But how challenging was it for you and your son Thomas to adjust to your new reality? It was, oh my God, for me, it was a big challenge because I was the go-getter, um, you know, type A personality. And um, now all of a sudden it was slow down. So everything was slowed down, but I, I had a two-year-old at, at that time. And um, as you know, two-year-olds are two years old. So they like to hide behind the table so that I, can't get and pick him up and they like to to nag us a little bit that way um so that was a big challenge and that was a challenge because for six months he had been raised by my parents so he was related relating to them more than me at the beginning so we had to sort of reshuffle the whole thing and um you know he had to learn also that you know mama was back home and that meant that he needed to listen to mama um, and not, you know, Mammy and Peppy so much. Okay, and okay. as time went on, as your son grew older, how did your disability affect his character? Would you say it's made him more patient, more empathetic? What, what have you noticed? Yes. Well, the first thing is that he's able to notice what's not accessible. So he knows, you know, the cracks of the sidewalks. He knows when there's a slope you know, in the on the sidewalk, he knows um, about the grass that's hard for me to go on, or the fact that I can't be, um, you know, in the sandbox with him. So he knows all of this, but he also is very in, innovative and creative. And um, you know, I remember one story where he had met one of my friends who's quadriplegic, um, and um, my son, like I still needed to cut his food, and he saw my friend who his wife was cutting his food for him. And he said, I'm gonna invent this thing, you know, and he'll be able to cut his food on his own because that's important, Mama. Wow, so definitely a sense of empathy there. What kinds of stereotypes or discrimination do parents with disabilities face? Well, I think it's really hard for people to imagine that parenting is done differently sometimes. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of discrimination that can happen. I'm not saying that everybody sort of view us as, you know, uh, sort of a beast or, or anything like that, but there is clear discrimination. Um, and when we look at research, um, you know, we're overrepresented, for example, in child welfare. Um, so obviously there's something there in terms of changing stigma. 
And our event next week on Tuesday is really meant to sort of showcase the positive side of parenting differently um, so that people don't just have sort of that negative side. Tell us more about the event. Yes, you're going to be speaking, sharing your story. What exactly is that, just briefly before we wrap up? Great. So the event is um, part of Speaker Slam, which is an inspirational speaking competition, usually. This time around, it won't be a competition format. We're going to be 10 parents with different disabilities. Um, and also, uh, we looked at diversity. That was important to, uh, for us as well. And so each of us will have two to three minutes to tell about one story. Um, about the joy of parenthood. And so it's really meant to focus on the positive stories and um, also the stories that I'm pretty sure every parent will be able to relate to. And I think that's the uh, biggest message, actually. Okay. Well, thank you again for your time today. Parenting, mothering, it's not easy. And uh, your story and what you continue to do is an inspiration. Thank you so much.